Hi everyone, welcome to the week 4 video for XI232. So this week we started talking about life tables, which is quite a bit of a different way of displaying information about a mortality model. Instead of having it as a nice smooth function of t, where we just have this function for all future time, we actually have discrete information based on each year of age. So a huge advantage of this is it allows us to capture the idiosyncrasies of real human mortality, which is really nice. Obviously it's going to be a little more complicated than a nice function, but we can deal with that. So with this life table information, what we have is a sequence of values Lx. And the first value is Lx0, and we say that that's basically the number of starting lives that are age x0. Normally x0 is equal to 0, so I might sometimes call it L0. And then each x, each Lx for each integer age x in the future is just obtained by taking Lx0 times x minus x0 p x0. So we're looking at the number of lives starting off at age 0 times the probability that those lives survive to age x. So we can interpret Lx as actually the average number of lives out of those initial Lx0 starting lives that make it to age x. Technically, it's actually the expectation of a binomial random variable, capital Lx. So from these Ls, from just this one sequence of values, we can actually get information about all p's, q's, and deferred q's when we're looking for integer ages and integer durations. So it's really useful. Just from this one sequence, we can get all of that information. A disadvantage, however, of using life tables is that we are restricted to integer ages and integer durations. If we want to make any kind of conclusions or do any calculations involving a fractional period of a year or a probability that starts at a non-integer age, we need to make some fractional age assumptions to deal with that. And we talked about the two most common. First of all is UDD, which stands for Uniform Distribution of Deaths. And what we do there is basically just assume that the fractional part of a year that's lived after we uh, take off the we just chop off the decimal place, looking only at the decimal place, assume that is a uniform 0, 1 random variable that's independent of the number of whole years that the person lives. And the result we get in that case is that sqx is equal to s times 1qx, and that's for s between 0 and 1. And we got a couple of other results that derive from that, how to calculate px, of course, the probability density function within each year of age turns out to be constant, and the force of mortality within each year of age turns out to be increasing. The second assumption that we make, which turns out to be a really nice result as well, but is slightly less common than UDD, is CFM, which stands for constant force of mortality. No brainer as to what that means. What we do in that case is assume that within each year of age, the force of mortality is actually constant. So we can actually calculate the force of mortality within each year by just taking negative the log of 1px. And then that gives us the result that spx is equal to 1px raised to the power of s. And again, that's for s between 0 and 1. So we can get other results from this as well. We can calculate q's. And uh, obviously, the force of mortality in this case is going to be a constant rather than increasing as it is with UDD. And now in both of these cases, we're assuming here that the starting age x is an integer. If we're dealing with a non-integer age x, we have some techniques to obtain results that we can actually use. So we have to split up those p's into ratios of different p's and calculate each one of them using those simplifying assumptions. So that was actually everything for this week. Um, your first assignment is being marked currently by the TA, so hopefully he'll have those back to you soon and have a fantastic weekend.